Hello again, this is another week five lecture, more about statuses from the previous lecture you should have already viewed and taken notes on. So remember I asked you to keep some space for me in between the statuses and the roles section. Well, here's what we need to include there. And please remember, I, I know I remind you of this sometimes, but maybe I need to remind you of this more often than I do. Please remember that you do not need to just simply write down this bare bone skeleton that I have on the, on the board here. You need to write down much more than uh, what I have written here because we're going to have a more lengthy explanation. I'm going to give you a more lengthy explanation and luckily since this is online you don't have to raise your hand and ask me to repeat myself. Just stop me. Make fun of whatever funny face you can freeze frame me on and back me up so that I tell you again what it is you need to write down or slow me down. I would love to hear on YouTube how my voice sounds when you slow me down. But anyway, um, take more notes than just this, um, this skeleton that I have back here. Okay, so we already know that a status is a position within the larger social structure. Those positions, many, many, many positions that exist all throughout social structure, are always connected originally to the norms established by those social institutions that you also have details about in your notes. Okay? So, an achieved status, in the previous lecture I did not write down a definition of it. You might have included it because I told you in our discussion, but here I've got some key words that need to be in a good definition, okay? An achieved status is an earned position in society. You get that status and you keep that status through effort on your part. Okay, so the examples I gave in a previous um, lecture were teacher and student, right? These are earned statuses or achieved statuses. We get them through effort on our part. We keep them through effort on our part. My examples here are employee, any kind of employee that you might want to be, right? This is directly connected to the economy. Okay, there's also some connections of employee back to family because we have some additional achieved statuses. I could put breadwinner here. Breadwinner is typically something associated with the family structure that's linked to the economy. So make these connections when we're discussing them, okay? And your reaction papers make some connections like this, maybe through an examination of your own life, your statuses and how they're connected to, um, to what social institution. But employee, regardless of what that employee is, are you a daycare worker? Are you a neurosurgeon? Are you anything in between? That's your employment status. Sometimes your employment status is intended to be very temporary, only a stepping stone toward a future career, for instance. Uh, but employee is an achieved status. You have to do something to earn it. You definitely have to do stuff to keep it, right? And here I chose convict as my other example of an earned position in society or an achieved status because you, you get this status through effort on your part. And I put this up here because I don't want you to mistake this word achieved for something that's always happy. Okay, I don't think anyone sets out and you don't ask any five year old what do you want to be when you grow up and you know a jailbird is probably not what they're going to say. But that is an achieved status because through some kind of effort on the individual's part, through the interaction with the norms in society that do not approve of those actions, you achieved the status of convict. Okay. So, achieve status is not always pleasant hunky-dory necessarily just because we use the word achievement here, okay? So don't make that mistake. All right, ascribe status. Um, oh, I, did, I still did not uh, give you a definition. I meant to write down the definition of ascribe status here. So ascribe status is something that is assigned to you through no effort on your part. Society assigns it to you. So please include that in your notes if you don't already have that. I intended to write that here, but I see now when I look back that I gave another um, example instead of the definition. So an ascribed status is something that you inherit at birth or you get involuntarily later in life. Involuntary means you did nothing to get it. It just was bestowed on you. 
okay? So I put here gender definitions because gender roles that exist in our society or any other society, we inherit those socially defined positions at birth based on our physical category. Now we have a chapter later in, um, in the semester, I think it's after midterm, where we will look at gender and sex inequality and we will actually look at the three, notice I said three, naturally occurring sex categories in nature. That's what naturally occurring means in nature, not abnormal, but nature. But for now, we will just talk about the gender definitions associated with males and females. Uh, because females have um, social expectations placed on them regarding family, usually before social expectations are placed on them regarding employment, okay? Males, on the other hand, typically, and you might not be old enough yet in your, in your um, lives, you females and males listening to this, males typically have the social assumption that they inherit at birth that they are going to be employees they're going to have an occupation. Their occupation, their status as breadwinner in society, there's a status associated with family and also economy, those two social institutions. Typically males get assigned that position in society, that assumption about their positions in society, and typically females will get assigned the, um, the status of occupation, like the expectation that they're going to have an occupation, but first and foremost, most females are seen as baby makers and mamas. Um, I just read, I think it was in my gender studies class, I just read um, a reaction paper from a student who talked about the fact that at this point in her life she's decided not to have children and everybody around her is saying, oh, you'll change your mind. Everybody around her assumes that she's not um, really serious because the social connection, the assumption about the role associated with female adulthood is so closely connected with um, with uh, reproduction worldwide that usually females are seen their master as their master status is their sex category. So that is a good segue into this last part, a master status, another subtype of status in general. So a master status is the one that controls it all. I thought of the Lord of the Rings uh, when I was writing this, the one ring to control them all. Well, the master status is kind of like this. So a master status is a position, the same definition of status in general, use that to write a good definition of master status. Master status is a position within society that society says is the most important status that a person occupies at, at any given time. Society says it. Sorry folks, we don't get to choose. Some of you females out there were saying, um, hey, I don't want a family, I want to have a career first and then maybe family secondary. Um, but that's not what people are probably going to ask you when you only see them once a year at Thanksgiving. Uh, you know, do you have a boyfriend? Are you getting married? Um, what about kids? These are the kinds of questions typically that you ask when you're being introduced to somebody for the first time or when you haven't seen people for a while and they want to catch up. Females usually get questions about childbearing or some sort of marital status, family statuses. Whereas males, are you in school? What do you want to be when you grow up? Kinds of questions. What is your breadwinning status, in other words? Um, which they want to, typically males to have that position as breadwinner prior to thinking about, well, now that you're established in your career, don't you think about getting married? Do you have a girlfriend? What about, you know, what about giving me grandbabies? Those kinds of questions. Now, maybe you're all too, too young to have experienced these things yet. Some of you are 18, 19, right out of college, and maybe um, your mom is not asking for grandbabies yet. But these things um, are typical behaviors um, and typical experiences on the micro scale that, that males and females can expect to have based on macro scale expectations 
for gender roles and gender definitions in our society as a whole. We inherit those at birth. We can change them slowly over time collectively. We can change those attitudes about gender expectations. However, in most societies worldwide, most societies worldwide, female is a master status. Your status as reproducer is a master status. Whereas for males, their education and their occupation status is typically a master status. That's worldwide. In a country like the United States where we have freedom and we have the ability to make changes and alterations to our social structure over time, many folks are working to change gender definitions over the decades. It won't be a quick process. But uh, th that is a unique thing to a country like the United States that has so much diversity and liberty to do those changes. Freedom means we can opt to change. Other societies, the culture does not include the value of individualism or the value of freedom. You must follow what the master status is ascribed as being in your particular social structure in other places in the world. Okay, we will look at roles in our next video. Thank you for your attention. Bye.